Today we're going to be looking at this antenna right here. It's been modified from my previous configuration. You can see that it still has the telescopic whip on top, but let's look at what I've done to change it. This is now a six band antenna that works from 10 meters to 40 meters. And we're gonna look at the things that have been done to it to make it uh, work as it should. And we'll talk a little bit about the performance. The bottom section, if you've looked at my previous videos, is a fiberglass extendable paint pole. The two top sections are aluminum. And I've got a previous video about that right there, including with a telescopic whip on top. But let's look at what I've done most recently to make this a multi-band antenna. If you've done much looking around on the internet, you'll know what this is modeled after. And I it by no means claim to have improved on the design that this is uh, similar to, uh, but it works very well. I've worked stations all over Europe, Bulgaria, Italy, Spain, uh, New Zealand, uh, just all, all over. So the performance is very good. Of course, always depending on the propagation conditions at the time. But uh, le let me continue on here. The bottom section that you see there in yellow is the paint pole with the collapsible whip that will extend to 18 foot on top. The top of the pole has been tapped to accept the threads of the telescopic whip antenna. So let's get a little bit closer and see what, what we've got here. At the bottom here, you can see that I've got two pieces of angle. Uh, all total is probably seven, eight inches long. This was picked up at my local DIY store. It was at, at Lowe's actually. Uh, I've cut this where this part right here is the radiating element, the bus bar for the radiating element. This is the ground side. As you can see, I have 16 radials on here. We'll look at those a little closer in a minute. Uh, we've got a connector for our coax. Coax comes in at the bottom. Center pin of the coax goes to this top bar to our five radiating elements. And the bottom is the ground that goes to all of our radials. Uh, what else can I say about this? Uh, bolts are just standard bolts. Uh, nickel plated. Uh, I'll probably replace these with stainless steel at some point in the near future. And it's attached to the bottom of the paint pole right here. The two elements on each side, the two on the left and the two on the right, are wire that goes all the way up to the top, and I'll give you a view of that in a minute. But what we have here is 20, 20 meters, 17 meters, 40 and 15 work off the middle. Then we have 12 meters and 10 meters. So we have five bands here. The center one that does 40, does 40 meters as a quarter wave and 15 meters as a, as a uh, three quarter wave. And we'll talk a little bit about the performance on the 40 and 15 meter wire in a minute. And some compromise that has to be made 
if you want to do both bands on the same uh, same conductor. But anyway, as you'll see, this is fiberglass right here, so this is obviously not going to conduct. But what I've done is just modified this minor uh, in a minor way from how it was previously. Previously, the coax connected at the bottom of the first aluminum section of this pole. Where now, uh, the wire goes a little bit farther down and goes up till you get to this point right here where the center conductor for 40 meters and 15 meters connects to the bottom of the aluminum section and then goes all the way to the top. The two elements on each side for 20, 17, 12, and 10 go up to some PVC cut to length uh, 12 and 10 terminate at this section and if you look up to the next T that is where 20 and 17 terminate right there at the top of these sections I have some uh, marine grade bungee I guess you could call it shot cord bungee whatever you want to call it it's just like bungee cord but it's marine got grade it's solid rubber in the middle and it's supposed to be able to stand up against the outdoor uh, elements UV light things like that without any problem so we'll see how that performs over the long term uh, I had to replace the farm fence post that it was connected to with a metal with a wooden 4x4 reason being the farm fence post was a conductor and seeing how it was driven into the ground it would ground out the signal uh, or attenuate significantly the signal coming from the radio to the radiating elements uh, what else can I tell you about this? Tailed in place. This is uh, not complete yet, but I wanted to give a uh, an idea of what we've got so far. Currently, it's just held in place with a couple of bungees to the 4x4. Four four. This withstood 20 mile an hour winds and storms, winter storms that we've had recently. And performance is good we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute let's talk about cost total cost for this is the aluminum from Lowe's uh, a piece 48 inches long was I think seven dollars I've got a significant amount left I just cut the pieces that I needed the wire came from Amazon some of it was left over from a previous stuff some of this is speaker wire that i'm using for the radials but the rest is uh the wire that you see right here and right here is 14 gauge wire uh, again it came off of amazon i think all total i've got probably seven eight dollars in wire on the antenna that includes the black radiating elements here along with the radials so seven bucks for the aluminum seven let's say seven dollars for the wire the bolts i had laying around the paint pole was from a previous project it was 39 dollars the whip antenna on top let's back up a little bit here the whip antenna on top was $20 off of Amazon. Uh, what else have we got here? I think that's about it. The aluminum, the bolts, the paint pole, the bungees. Bungees I had laying around the house. They're inexpensive. You can pick those up anywhere. 
Oh, and the PVC that I made the tea with, I had around the house. So, probably the most expensive item other than the paint pole was the four by four. I think it was 10 bucks. But anyway, the SWR readings on each of the bands are very good. Most of them are below 1.3, uh, 40, 20, 35, 10, 12, and uh, or below 1.3, somewhere right around 1.3. The 15 meter, that's something right there. Since the 15 meter is part of the 40 meter element and it's a three quarter wave, there's a compromise that I had to make. It was either make SWR best on 40 meters or make it best on 15 meters. So since I use 40 meters more than 15, uh, I let 15 meter take the hit. So the SWR on 15 meters is about 1.8 to 1. So it's a little bit high. I could get it lower, but then I'd have to give up some, uh, some SWR on the 40 meter and I would just rather have the 40 meter. All bands are usable. Four out of the five are below 1.5. And uh, it's, it's all perfectly acceptable. Works really well. I have no complaints about it. I've been using it for about a week now. And let's back up so we can get a full view of it again. So what else can I say about this? If you know anything about antennas just a little bit and have looked around, you'll recognize that there's a certain antenna that ends in commander that does something very similar to this as far as it being multi-band on a vertical. And it probably might do a little bit better than what mine does. I don't know, but total cost for everything I have here, including the paint pole, which was 39 bucks, total cost for everything is probably right at a hundred dollars. So if you look for one of the antennas online that uses the same type of uh, setup as this, you're gonna pay minimum $350. This one right here, a hundred bucks or less. It's all put together. It's all working. I've made contacts on every band. I have no, no reservations about using this. Will it hold up as long as that commercial antenna that you can buy uh, online? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but I'm getting very good results out of this. No complaint. Uh, saved a lot of money and learned a lot in the, uh, in the process. One thing I will say, if you try to do something like this, when you get ready to tune your antenna to the different bands, go ahead and make your SWR readings on, uh, on each band but as you adjust each one go back and check all readings again not just the one that you adjusted because with the elements being in close proximity to each other changes on one does have some effect on the other one so you may find that one element's too long and you shorten it and or let's say two elements are too long that need to be shortened you shorten one, you may find that by shortening that one, it has just enough impact on the other one to make it where it does not need to be shortened. So they do have uh, some interaction with each other. So as you make an adjustment to one radiating element, when you go back and check it, check all five. Don't, 
don't try to cut, particularly cut, don't try to cut or adjust all five at the same time without taking a reading because if you do, you'll be chasing your tail going back and making adjustments all over the place. So, uh, adjust one element, go back and read all five, make sure, sure it's good. And what I did, I started with the shortest element first. Some people would say start with the longest, but I started with the shortest because I figured changes in the short elements would have a bigger impact on the long ones than changes would in the long elements on the short. So anyway, if this video has been uh, interesting or helpful, go ahead and share it. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, I get no money or anything from this. This is just sharing my experience. Maybe it'll help somebody else. Get them on the air. Help them save some money that they can use towards something else. So with that, we'll close for today. Next video is going to be most likely a remote antenna switch that I'll be putting together. So stand by for that. Thanks. Have a good day and see you next time.